Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. We're going to be doing watercolour today and we've got alizarin crimson, French ultramarine, cadmium yellow light, neutral tint and burnt umber. These are the colours. Going to be using some water brushes too. This is a kit I got off of Amazon. I've got a flat brush. Uh, this particular kit comes with three sizes and three sizes of round brush too. And a water brush allows you to press this little button to increase the flow of water from the hollow handle down to the bristles. So it's a, it's a really fun, kind of nice self-contained way to work. Particularly good, I mean, I'm obviously in the studio today, but it's particularly good if you're out and about down at the beach or something. So here's my very messy watercolour palette. And I typically start a watercolour painting by going back to the palette with all the dried on paint. And as you can see, just diluting that and just pressing the button on the handle and mixing that up, in this case, into a nice purpley kind of grey. Really nice way to get a unique colour mix to start off the painting. So today we're going to draw and paint an elephant and I'm using a reference photo from Pixabay. So if you're a regular viewer of the channel, um, you'll know that some of my videos involve what's called the Animal Alphabet Challenge. And uh, I use Pixabay because it provides reference-free images and it allows me to explore drawing and painting subjects that you know aren't around me. So, um, Without going to a zoo or a safari park or something uh, you know, strange like that, I would struggle to find an elephant in England. So, you know, Pixabay is a great resource. You know, I do take my own reference photos and I work from life whenever I can. That's what I enjoy the most. But I don't want to be totally limited on what I paint. So, so that's why I'm using Pixabay today. So beginning the drawing with the brush, you can see I'm using the flat brush, just the tips of the bristles. And that allows me to put down really quite precise, for the most part, straight lines, but even a nice smooth curved line, as you can see, for the line of the trunk I've started to put in there, or as I'm doing now, the lower edge of one of the ears. And when I do my preliminary drawings for a painting of an animal, I'm typically looking at the reference and thinking to myself, what, what's the least amount of drawing I can do here to capture the essential features of the animal? So a couple of tusks going in there and I was just using the very corner of the flat brush there. So a flat brush can be remarkably versatile, perhaps more so than you might think if it's not something that you've tried before. And you can see, certainly with that right hand tusk, I'd pretty much run out of paint uh, on the brush. And I was kind of diluting and diluting by pressing the button on the, on the handle of the water brush. Um, and, you know, my temptation is often to go, as, go on for as long as possible without having to return to the palette. Uh, and that's perhaps why I've been enjoying using the water brushes of late. Uh, I think on the whole, I have to go back to the palette somewhat less frequently. And I have to, obviously I have to dip my brush in water less frequently as well, you know, really only if I want to clean it. And even then, if you don't mind using up the water contained in the handle, you can just press the button and, and rub the bristles on a scrap bit of paper or in a paper towel or cloth or something. So this elephant walking along from left to right is starting to take shape. I actually flipped the image from Pixabay. I, I tend to do that. I tend to mirror the images just to so that I'm doing on average something in a slightly different pose to what, what other people downloading it from Pixabay will be doing. Um, I won't be copying the background in the photo exactly, I'll just be putting this elephant into kind of a general environment really. So things are looking reasonably well proportioned. I've got the, the main bulk of the animal in and so now I'm just using the corner of the brush again to pop in the position of the eye and, and kind of at that key wrinkle or crease in the hide above the eye as well. Just got to complete the, the line of the trunk. Now 
you know, you can see I've kept the line work fairly pale because while I'm at the moment pretty happy with my drawing, uh, if I do need to make a correction or resize something, if I've, if I've used very, very dark lines when I'm using watercolour, they're going to be more tricky to hide or soften than if I've kept things relatively pale. And you can see I've just popped in a few random blades of grass there. For the most part, trying to keep the angle of those lines that I've put in different, so it looks fairly random, hopefully. So having cleaned up part of my palette and squeezed out some fresh watercolour onto the palette as well, I'm now coming in with more or less pure ultramarine blue. And I'm going to use this, as you can see, I'm starting to introduce some deep areas of tone. So there are lots of different ways to work with watercolour. You know, one of the very traditional ways is to work from light to dark. Uh, and that can work really well. Um, but, you know, you can, you know, to some extent, I find you can do dark to light as well. You know, you've got to be a little bit more careful, perhaps, in some ways. But um, as you can see, I'm starting to introduce some shadow areas. And this is perhaps more the way I would more commonly work with acrylic. But if you put down dark with watercolour, once it's dry, if you want to go over with a wash of a lighter colour, generally speaking, you know, you will you will be able to do that without disturbing the first layer of paint. You know, if you were to really scrub at that dry layer, then of course that could be a problem. That could lift off some of the, the work you've already done. But you can see now the paint is starting to run out of my brush, but by using the water brush, squeezing the handle, I can still get some nice flow. And although I was putting down dark tone right at the beginning, now I'm getting a nice mid tone. And furthermore, I'm almost drawing with the brush. You know, this is kind of the shading you could do with a pencil where you kind of draw repeated contour lines but of course the brush is much quicker so I've wrapped those lines around the belly of the beast so to speak and now I'm doing the same around the one of the front legs and I'm just lifting out some of the tone in fact from the bottom of that front leg because it came out perhaps a little dark so the water brush kind of allows you to do everything you could with a, with a normal brush obviously you could just dip your normal brush in water to do that but it's just so quick, you know, it's, uh, and that's why I, I enjoy using it and why I wanted to highlight it uh, in today's demo, really. So again, I'm, I'm treating this study very much as a tonal piece initially. So I happen to be painting in, in blue, but I mean, you could do this with burnt umber or yellow ochre or neutral tint. Or you could mix up your own brown or grey. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, a colour straight out of the tube. But if you're going to explore that, you know, I mean, uh, ultramarine blue is a reasonably conventional colour for a deep shadow colour. But you could just go with a pure red or a pure purple. Um, you know, so that's one of the great things with watercolour, I think. You can work so rapidly that you can be free to experiment in lots of different ways, which perhaps you might be more reluctant to if you were using oils. Um, but uh, the spontaneity of the medium and the rapidity, you know, with which you can, or the speed, uh, it's probably a better word, with which you can work and get a painting done uh, is, is great. It's really good fun. So you can see I'm continuing to lift out bits of paint from that lower front leg where, where I've gone a bit dark there. So in just a few minutes, you know, we've, we've gone from just an outline drawing to some sense of three dimensions. So what I'm doing here is putting down, using the same, yeah, the same colour, it's still the water brush, same coloured paint, just more dilute. I've put down an area of cast shadow underneath the animal and across the grass. And here I'm just adding in some almost perspective lines, 
that, that zigzag perspective lines on the ground to help create a sense of depth on the foreground going back towards the elephant and then I've just put in a sloping horizon line kind of down low because it helps make the animal seem larger I feel and I've deliberately angled the line just because I think it makes for a more interesting composition. So now I'm taking my clean water brush and I'm just wetting the entire background above the horizon line but behind the elephant or around the elephant on the painting, I guess. Okay, so it's just clean water in the brush and by, by wetting the paper, that's gonna allow me to apply a more fluid wash. Okay, so I'm coming in with cadmium yellow now. So I mentioned earlier about it, you know, experimenting. I don't normally paint yellow skies. You know, generally speaking uh, in the UK, we, you know, we don't get much yellow in the sky. I mean, you know, it could be down near the horizon, I suppose, on a winter sky or a sunset, something like that. Um, and I'm not sure that you get a pure yellow sky anywhere in the world. I don't, I don't know. I don't think you do. Um, but I'm basically coming in with the pure cadmium yellow. And you can see I put it on a you know, pretty thick there on the right. But by continuing to press the button on the water brush handle, I can dilute and soften that area and spread that region of pigment, you know, more or less as far as I want to. And that's going to allow me to just block in that background. Now you'll notice at the top of the paper you can see this paper is buckling quite badly at the moment because um, you know I've made it so wet. But this is the uh, the Dalarani mixed media paper, and you know in my experience it you know it does buckle if you get it very very wet like this. But on the whole, it's quite you know resistant to buckling as papers go. Now the thing is though, once this dries, when it's still taped down, it, it probably will still have a little bit of buckling left in it. But once I remove the tape. And if I maybe roll the painting up and then unroll it, uh, in my experience, generally speaking, those buckles, if not completely gone, they're almost completely gone. Certainly, if I wanted to frame this painting, a good framer could, you know, stretch out any little imperfections with, with no problem at all. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a good paper. So now I'm just coming in with the, the round water brush. And again, there's just clean water there. And I'm just running a few lines of pure water through that sky, just decided that area was a little bit heavy and then I'm just using a clean paper towel to lift off some of the paint and create a little bit of texture in the sky as well. Next colour up, I've added some alizarin crimson to that cadmium yellow and you can see that's given me a nice golden orange. And I'm using that to fill in the, the distant background. I mean, as, as mentioned, I'm really just creating this environment just to place the animal on a solid bit of ground and against a, a background, which I hope will work well. So I'm, I'm not copying a particular background. Now coming in with a green in the foreground. And what I'm doing here is just moving the water brush at, in random directions to create some random textures. And I'm also varying how dilute the paint is. So if I feel it's not moving around very much, then I'm just squeezing the handle a little bit and you'll see a little flood of water come out of the bristles. So it's a really nice, you know, responsive way to, to paint. Now onto the elephant itself. Now obviously traditionally we think of elephants as being grey, but because I've used quite a lot of yellow in the background, I've got that pure yellow sky and I've got that yellowy orange kind of uh, distant background if you like. I thought well complementary colour of yellow is obviously purple 
So I'm using a mixture of the alizarin crimson and the ultramarine blue. And I've just mixed up a fairly, fairly weak purple here just to kind of experiment and see how this elephant is going to look if I make it purple. So I'm just putting on quite a light wash at the moment and I'm quite happy to go over uh, any of the work I've done on the elephant so far because that's dry then unless I really scrub at that paint it's, it's not going to go anywhere and when the when this purple wash you know dries it's going to be transparent and consequently you know the work I've done won't be lost you know but it but it will be somewhat softened so so the rather harsh contrast between the edges of my kind of contour marks or shading marks that I've put down, the contrast between the edges of those and the white of the paper will, will be diminished by putting on this, this purple wash. So, you know, as you've probably gathered by now, this is a real time uh, demonstration. You know, I'm not really editing anything out here apart from if I'm, you know, mixing a bit of paint just to save you, uh, you know, having to endure that. But in, ter in terms of the painting itself, I'm, I'm showing you everything. And, uh, you know, let me know you know, which type of uh, video you prefer, because more recently I've been doing videos where, you know, sections are done in time lapse or speeded up. Um, but in addition to that, quite a lot of Quite a few people have been commenting and saying, oh, you know, I'm actually really enjoying some of your older videos where, uh, you know, maybe I spend an hour kind of, you know, painting at the head of a sheep or something. And they, they, people are saying that, you know, quite enjoying painting along with me and that they can pause it and then, you know, do each stage as they go. So, you know, do let me know if there's a particular style of video you want to see and I'll, I'll try to include it uh, on the channel if possible. Now, for those of you who've been recently uh, tuning in to watch my portrait paintings in line with the Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Week uh, live feed that they're doing on Facebook each Sunday, I, I am still doing those uh, and I will be posting another portrait video at some point. Um, but having done three, three weeks in a row, I thought it was about time to change the subject matter. So what I'm doing here is coming in with, you know, more of a you know, darker purple, a little bit of a grey purple perhaps. And you can see I put a little bit of cast shadow on the upper foreleg where the ear is in front of that leg. And I'm just working my way around the animal, looking at my reference and, and thinking, well, you know, where are the darker shadows now? Where are the darker little bits of texture? And as I do with everything I paint, I tend to work my way around the whole subject with a particular colour. Um, when I've got that on the brush. I know some artists would work, you know, left to right or up and down or up to down, I should say. Uh, and they would start by completing, you know, a part of the painting to a very high level of finish and then just work their way across the paper or the canvas. Uh, I tend to work on the whole thing at once and leave different areas and, you know, less focused or less, less finished. Now, when it comes to the texture on the ears or the trunk or the hide of the elephant, you know, we've got a choice there. We could try to describe every single wrinkle or we could just try to capture the character of the wrinkles. And so, you know, I'm, I'm doing the latter, as you can see. Now, despite going in with that purple, you know, in the first instance, you can see I've mixed up a more reddish brown this time, so alizarin crimson again. And although I've got burnt umber on the palette, um, I've actually mixed this brown, as I was starting to say, with alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and some of the cadmium yellow. And again, I've let the the purple wash that I, that I put on dry, and so I'm, I'm kind of experimenting with the different effects I can get by putting one coloured wash over another. But at the same time, you can see that with this brown wash, at the moment, I'm not applying that everywhere. So I'm just applying it in the areas where I want to gradually darken the tone. And 
you can see I'm keeping in mind the direction of the brush stroke I'm putting down even though it's a wash if some of those brush marks happen to be visible when the wash dries then I would rather that they were helping the drawing and helping the modeling so that's why I'm kind of keeping with my contours so I'm, I'm wrapping the brush marks around the foreleg and wrapping them around the belly now even though I've kind of done the drawing phase there's no harm in continuing that for the style of you know, watercolour wash that I'm doing here. Now you can see as I've been working I've gradually covered more and more of the entire elephant with this brownish wash. But I am leaving little areas, you know, somewhat unpainted. And also the strength of the wash has varied as I've moved around the elephant as well. So I'm continuing to, to model tone as I apply the wash. And I'm also kind of at the same time looking to see how this wash overlays that dark ultramarine that I put down initially as well. And you can see that the combination of that initial ultramarine blue, the purple, and now this brown, it's now becoming a somewhat more realistic colour. And I'm definitely not going for, you know, hyperrealism here or, you know, if, if my elephant ends up completely purple, uh, if I think that's going to work for the painting, then that's absolutely fine with me. Um, but, but nevertheless, you can see that you can start off with quite a dramatic colour or couple of colours. And then if you put a tertiary colour over the top, you know, a brown or a grey that you've mixed up, you can soften the effect of those first layers and, and bring it towards something more realistic if you want to. So I've come back to that cast shadow on the, on the leg. And cast shadows, you know, tell us quite a lot about what's going on in terms of the structure of the animal and you know, how the light is falling, obviously. So that ear, you know, is casting a shadow on the foreleg, but also on the, on the trunk, not the, not the trunk, on the torso as well. Now the tusks, you know, they probably aren't pure white, uh, but for the moment I'm leaving them almost all pure white. Just because if I want to keep a highlight there, for the technique I'm using today, where I'm not going to be using any acrylic on top or any anything like that. Um, if I can preserve the highlights, then, then I'm going to do that, you know. Um, just makes just makes things a little bit more efficient, I think, in, in this particular instance. So a few more details added around the eye and on the, on the head of the elephant. Now they've, they've gone on perhaps a little heavy, I think, those lines to the left of the eye. We'll see how, how things work out in a moment. And now I'm kind of using more of a dry brush technique now so that the, the bristles of the brush have begun to dry out a little bit and that's allowing me to put down a more controlled line or texture in various areas. So, you know, watching this, you may think, well, this is, you know, perhaps a bit odd. He started off with a purple, or early on he used a purple wash. Then he kind of neutralised it with the brown, and now he's added an even stronger purple. Um, and I'm not sure I have a completely straightforward explanation for you regarding that. It's just kind of, I guess it's just sort of an emotional response, really. I sort of start off thinking, well, I think purple would work quite well here. And, and then I just kind of go back and forth a little bit and just sort of play around and, and and you know, test whether I'm going in the right direction. Now, having talked earlier about you know working on the whole painting, I've been working on the elephant itself for quite a quite a bit now, and uh, you know, so it's time to kind of work a little bit on the ground, and and so that's not too too weak in comparison. Obviously, I want the focus to be on the animal, but got to have some 
sense of foreground and background. So we've got that just simple wash for the sky. We've got that very simple dry brush effect for the, the middle ground. So that the foreground needs a little bit more contrast and strength of tone, a little bit more focus. So you can see I'm more or less having a bit of fun here, putting on some deeper greens and you know, putting down some random marks to indicate the foliage and the grass which is growing in the foreground. And if you're using a flat brush, then definitely experiment with all the different shapes of marks you can get. Although I've switched to the, the round brush here. And again, you know, a round brush, these little squiggly lines I'm putting down, difficult to, not impossible, but difficult to achieve with the flat brush. But, uh, you know, the flat brush with the corner, the edge, held at an angle, pushed down, squished out, you can still get a huge range of marks. But the fine line that you can get with the round brush you know, does have a characteristic of its own. And, and the two combined, I think, work really quite well. Now I'm using essentially a blue there to put in some extra line work. And so this is something I enjoy playing with as well. You know, how hard do you want to make the outline of the animal? How soft do you want to make it? And of course, in the real world, there aren't really any lines. You know, it's just something that we use to kind of indicate the boundary between one patch of tone and another, you know, with, with a few exceptions. So. Conventional wisdom says, you know, don't outline the tusks, for example, because that will perhaps make them look a little too two dimensional. But here I felt for the overall effect of the image, I think the outlines on the tusks in blue work quite well and that they make them pop against the background. So if you've seen any of my acrylic painting demos, you're you may remember that I talk about alternating between drawing and painting and drawing and painting all the way through the process of creating the image. And this, that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing the same thing with the watercolour. Let's have another go at this eye. So not too bad, but not quite right, really. But you can see by outlining the trunk and the tusks, it's really made the animal stand out from the background a little bit more. So I'll leave the eye for the moment and just continue with some of that hopefully fairly characterful line work. So this provides me with another opportunity to reassess the initial drawing that I did. And hopefully, you know, I did a reasonably good job. But if here and there I feel the need to correct or enhance certain areas, then even at this late stage in the painting, you know, I, I have no problem with, with doing that. I, th I think it's a good thing to do. In some ways, one could view, you know, this line work as sort of tightening up. But equally, I think if you do it in the right way, it's kind of helps you to stay loose. Because if you treat it just as if it's the initial sketch and, and, you know, use your line work, put it down quite rapidly, then hopefully it doesn't become too tight. Of course, there is a bit of a danger of overworking the painting. And, and that's something I do want to avoid. So you can see I'm using some cross hatching and just some, you know, some sketch lines really 
you know, in the same way I would if I was using a Sharpie marker or a biro or even or even a pencil. So hopefully the elephant's starting to come to life a little bit now. Still going back to this eye, as I mentioned, I wasn't totally happy with what I'd done. <clears throat> and so I'm just lifting off some of the work I did before with my with my finger. You know, once you've got the surface of the painting damp, um, if you haven't put the watercolour on too long ago, even if it even if it's almost dry, you can kind of re-wet it and lift it off sometimes, or at least or at least soften the area. And so I'm using the side of the round brush now. So that's something I haven't done so far with this painting. We talked earlier about the, the, the flat brush, how you can angle that in different ways to get different effects and different types of mark. But with the, with the round brush, you can do the same thing. So you can see I, I'm using the side of the round brush to just pop in a little bit of tone on the tusks. And then I've used my finger to just kind of soften that whole area. So watercolour, you know, you really can get your fingers in there if you want, if you want to. So again, coming back to the eye, still not happy. So I'm lifting and kind of softening that whole area with, uh, with a paper towel, slightly damp paper towel. So let's have another go, see what happens. And what I find almost without fail, um, if I'm struggling with a certain area of a drawing or a painting and I cannot work out what it is I'm doing wrong or why I'm not getting the effect I want, almost without fail, I find that if I simplify what I'm trying to do and, and take it right down to the basic shapes and tones, that will almost always work better than anything else, basically. So less is more. And then having done that and hopefully got something I'm reasonably happy with, if I then feel I can, I, you know, it needs a little, a little, just a little extra something, well then, you know, you can always put just a little highlight in or a little touch of colour or something. So the end of an elephant's tail is obviously uh, <clears throat> you know, slightly different in character to the rest of it. So I just felt the need to enhance the end of the tail there. So notice I've, I've you know, although I have done maybe four layers of paint, on the rear end of the elephant and the rear legs. If you look at the rear legs compared to the, the front legs and the, the back end of the animal compared to the head, the rear end and the, and the, the torso and the rear legs are, have been done in far less detail. They're far less worked up than the head of the animal. And my hope would be that when you look at the animal, you, 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 know, you see the head, you just kind of accept that the, the, body's, the body's there, if that makes sense. Now, I probably could have left the elephant as it is. That would be, I guess, the conventional thing to do. But I thought, well, uh, one of the things I enjoy doing with my work is kind of playing around with the colours reflected in the highlights. And so what I'm doing here, as you can see, is I'm coming in with pure cadmium yellow. And I'm doing that far more strongly than I did the background. So the idea is that if I have this, this yellow sky, this golden sky, some of that colour is going to be reflected in the highlights uh, on the elephant's body. You know, probably, probably if, it, if this was a realistic situation, not as strongly as I'm doing. But I enjoy kind of playing around with that and, and seeing what I can get away with and seeing what kind of effects I get. So even though I kind of neutralise the purple for the most part that I put down on the elephant, you know, there is still quite a, quite a hint of purple there. And so 
what I'm doing now is just adding these little blasts or bursts of this cadmium yellow applied quite thickly and I'm just kind of looking at the image as a whole and you know trying to make it as, as visually interesting from my point of view as possible and you know as I've mentioned before you know watercolor yeah you know, I absolutely you know consider it a um, a worthwhile medium in, in its own right but one of the reasons I really enjoy working in watercolor is you can work so quickly and you can experiment you know with um, with different techniques and things so again using the side of the round brush here and of course you know if you look back at the reference from earlier in the video none of those colors are there there, there isn't really there might be a hint of purple in some of the shadows but not really not much um, there certainly isn't the yellow as I as, as, as I've depicted it but hopefully what I've created is a reasonably unique image that is still fully recognizable as a as an elephant with some structural integrity so I feel the animal's got a bit of weight a bit of presence to it um, and you know hopefully you could look at that and believe that yeah you know it could be walking along So there's the finished properly photographed painting. Hope you really enjoyed this return to the real time demo style of video. Um, I will be putting other videos up soon. So I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.